At 35,000 feet, you're breathing air that feels like standing on top of an 8,000 foot mountain. But here's the crazy part. Airlines could make it feel like sea level if they wanted to. So why don't they? Because doing that would cost them around $2 million per aircraft. Multiply that by a fleet of 100 jets, and you're looking at a $200 million problem. Today, we're breaking down exactly why every modern airliner pressurizes to 8,000 feet instead of sea level, and how that single decision saves airlines billions. And if you're into how physics and money collide at 35,000 feet, make sure to subscribe, because every week, we uncover the hidden engineering trade-offs that keep aviation running. To understand why this matters, let's start with what's happening outside your airplane window. At cruising altitude, around 35,000 feet, the air is unbelievably thin. The pressure out there is only about 3.5 pounds per square inch, compared to 14.7 psi at sea level. That means there's less than one-fourth the amount of air your body needs to survive. Without cabin pressurization, you'd lose consciousness in seconds. That's why aircraft are designed to simulate lower altitudes inside the cabin. Typically, that altitude is set to feel like you're standing at around 8,000 feet above sea level. Inside the cabin, the pressure sits at about 10.9 psi, while outside it's still just 3.5. The difference, roughly 6.4 psi. Might not sound like much, but that's the constant outward force acting on every square inch of the airplane's skin. Spread the pressure over the massive surface area of the fuselage and it adds up to hundreds of thousands of pounds of force pushing outward every single flight. So, if pressurizing to 8,000 feet already puts that much stress on an airplane, what would happen if we went all the way to sea level pressure? Let's start with the simple physics. At sea level, the air inside the cabin would be 14.7 psi, while outside it's still 3.5 at cruise altitude. That's a 10.2 psi pressure differential, about 60% more stress than what modern jets are designed to handle. That extra force might not seem like much, but for engineers, it's a nightmare. Every psi increase means more metal, thicker skin, and stronger frames. To handle a 10.2 psi differential, the fuselage would need aluminum that's 15% thicker. The internal frame spacing would have to shrink from about 20 inches to 15 inches. That makes the entire structure heavier, about 2,800 pounds heavier to be exact. And that's not just dead weight. In aviation, every extra pound means more fuel, less cargo, and less efficiency. Now let's talk about cost. Reinforcing an aircraft's fuselage to handle sea level pressurization comes with three major expenses. First, materials. About $850,000 worth of additional aluminum, bolts, and reinforcement. Second, engineering and certification roughly 400,000 in design validation and regulatory testing. And third, manufacturing complexity, an extra 750,000 for the added labor and assembly. Put it all together, you're looking at $2 million extra per plane. If an airplane orders 50 aircraft, that's $100 million added to their order before those planes even touch the runway. And that's just the beginning of the cost spiral. The heavier the aircraft, the more fuel it burns. That extra 2,800 pounds might not sound catastrophic, but it adds up over thousands of flights. For a Boeing 737 flying typical routes, that extra weight translates to about 180,000 in additional fuel burn each year. Over a 20-year lifespan, that's around 3.6 million in fuel penalties for every single airplane. Combine that with the $2 million in construction costs, and you get a total impact of 5.6 million per airplane. Multiply that across a fleet of 200 jets, and the total jumps to over $1.1 billion. It's a billion dollars saved simply by accepting that your cabin will feel like you're standing at 8,000 feet instead of at sea level. Because that's not just an engineering decision, it's a comfort trade-off. So now we know that 8,000 feet isn't random. It's the sweet spot between passenger comfort and aircraft efficiency. At typical cruising altitudes between 35,000 and 41,000 feet, that 6.4 psi differential keeps the plane strong enough to handle tens of thousands of flights, but still light enough to be fuel efficient. To go higher, say 10,000 feet cabin altitude, 
the passengers start feeling real symptoms. Go lower, like sea level, and the aircraft becomes too heavy and expensive to operate. 8,000 feet sits right in the middle. It's also where most people can stay alert and comfortable without supplemental oxygen. Your body's oxygen saturation stays above 90%, which is safe for the vast majority of passengers. That's why you might feel a little sleepy or notice your ears popping during descent, but you're still well within the safe range. If the cabin altitude climbed much higher, you'd start seeing headaches, fatigue, slower reaction times, and even dizziness for some travelers. So engineers designed a system that's safe, comfortable, and efficient. Not perfect, but optimized. If you're enjoying how these small engineering decisions have massive financial and physical consequences, take a second to like this video and subscribe. It really helps us keep making aviation content like this. Newer aircraft are starting to change the equation. Planes like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A350 use composite fuselages instead of aluminum. Composites are lighter, stronger, and don't suffer from metal fatigue the same way metal structures do. Because of that, these aircraft can safely handle higher pressure differentials. Instead of maintaining a cabin altitude of 8,000 feet, they can go down to around 6,000 feet, meaning the air inside feels noticeably denser and easier to breathe. Passengers report less dehydration, fewer headaches, and less jet lag after long-haul flights. That's a big win for comfort, but it still comes at a cost. Even with composites, designing for that extra pressure adds roughly $800,000 per aircraft. That's cheaper than full sea level pressurization, but it's still a financial decision airlines have to weigh carefully. Some airlines prioritize passenger comfort and go for the higher cost option. Others stick with the traditional aluminum jets because they're cheaper to operate, even if they're slightly less comfortable. Once again, it's the same trade-off we see across aviation. Physics on one side, economics on the other. There's no free comfort at 35,000 feet. Every improvement comes with a price tag. Let's zoom out and look at another hidden consequence, aircraft lifespan. Every time a plane takes off, climbs, cruises, and lands, it experiences one full pressurization cycle. During each cycle, the fuselage expands and contracts slightly as cabin pressure changes. Over time, those cycles add up, causing what's called metal fatigue, tiny cracks that slowly form in the structure. The greater the pressure difference between inside and outside, the more the metal flexes and the faster fatigue develops. By sticking to the 8,000-foot standard, airlines reduce that stress. Their airplanes last longer, require fewer expensive maintenance checks, and can safely fly more years before retirement. If that decision adds even three extra years to an aircraft's lifespan, that's a massive financial advantage. A new Boeing 737 costs about $100 million. Extending its service life by just a few years saves millions per jet. So while passengers might feel slightly more tired on landing, the trade-off extends the life of entire fleets and saves airlines hundreds of millions. From the passenger's perspective, 8,000 feet doesn't feel perfect, but it's perfectly intentional. That mild fatigue you feel, that's part of the balance. The pressure in your ears on descent, that's the byproduct of physics meeting cost efficiency. If airlines chose sea level pressurization, yes, you'd feel completely normal. But your ticket would likely cost more, the airplane would burn more fuel, and the airline's maintenance costs would skyrocket. Instead, they found the balance cabin altitude that keeps passengers safe, planes light, and operations affordable. It's the quiet engineering decision that makes modern air travel possible. And if you want to keep uncovering how those hidden trade-offs shape the skies, make sure to subscribe because every week we explore the fascinating why behind the way airplanes really work. Let's sum this up. Pressure rising to sea level would mean increasing the pressure differential from 6.4 psi to 10.2 psi. That one change would add $2 million in construction costs, burn 3.5 million more in fuel over the plane's lifetime, and shorten the airframe's life by several years. Add it all up and you're saving 5.6 million per aircraft by sticking to the 8,000 foot standard. Multiply that across a fleet of 200 planes and you're looking at over 1.1 billion saved. So the next time you're cruising through the clouds and you feel your ears pop, remember, that's not discomfort. That's a billion dollar engineering choice in action. 
every PSI, every rivet. Every ounce of air inside that fuselage is the result of decades of math, material science, and financial strategy working together to keep you safe, comfortable, and airborne. The next time you fly, take a deep breath and remember, you're not just sitting in an airplane cabin. You're sitting inside one of the smartest cost-saving ideas in aviation history. And if you want to learn more about how altitude affects flight performance, check out our video, Why 35,000 Feet is the Sweet Spot for Airplanes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.